Church has been in my body for 8,640 hours over the past seven years. As of this moment, the value of this shirt is equal to 0 0.001 pence per hour of me wearing it. I don't want to give up on this shirt because I do not know if my next shirt will last as long. Why can't 
This one's called Meet the Time of Arrival. I dream about what it would be like if people had superpowers and I could teleport anywhere with no loss of time. I would not want to be able to fly, have super speed or even control time. All I want is to be able to teleport anywhere with no loss of time. I hate the fact I have to spend my time travelling where I fantasise about what it would be like to be free from space and time. I would not have to waste around for my train to arrive, watching each minute tick by and making me wait for another meeting one more time. I would not have to declare the meter in the taxi rise and debate whether the cost of the fare is really worth the save time. I would not have to watch the traffic shudder inches because I could not afford to not get the bus this time. I would not have to check the clock as I go from this walk to jog to run because I want to save cash at the cost of my free time. I could save this time to let me do what really matters to me. I could see my friends, my partner, my mom without losing time on the two between A and B. But I am stuck with the cost of a commute on the time that is precious to me. Left dreaming about what if I could teleport anywhere instantly. This one's called Part Time. One of my extended aunties will occasionally buy things only to return them the next day. It could be a nice dress, a lamp, or some knickknack for around the house. She might get judging looks from the uptight Jobsworths when returning things, but she doesn't really care. These things aren't ridiculously expensive, usually around the 20 to 90 quid mark. But it's not something that she could really afford. It could be something that she really loves, but knows it isn't something that she needs. She might try the piece of clothing on, but wouldn't dare to wear it out and hide the tag. But she will still buy it and own it for a little while before she needs to part with it. Uh, this part of ownership is something that I haven't inherited. I think it's because I need to have a reason for buying something. But my auntie has the strength to know she doesn't need to constantly own new things to feel good about herself. She knows it's more important to be happy in the long term by being content with what she has rather than getting into debt by cutting her life with short periods of newness. So she will buy things and own them part-time as proof that she doesn't need them. This one's called queuing. I've been sat in this meeting for the past 30 minutes and we haven't gotten past the first item on the agenda. The person talking has spent 30 minutes to say something that only really takes a few seconds to say. We need to improve our reputation. This person speaks in an RP accent, is dressed in a well-fitting suit and has the kind of tiredness you get from living a life rather than working. That isn't to say they haven't worked, but that their life is more off the clock than on. It's times like this where I think about queuing. It's a decent idea in theory. First come, first serve, and then you wait for your turn. It can work in low-risk scenarios like at the shops. But 
what if there is an urgency in the what is needing to be done because you don't have the free time to spend waiting? For example, it takes approximately five weeks to get your first payment from Universal Credit. And if you don't have any savings, you don't have that much time to wait. You can apply for an advance, but that just means you join another queue. And like queuing, you have an idea of how long things should take. For example, me going to this meeting. Two minutes for getting cash out, five waiting for a train, 12 to get to the destination, and 10 to get to the meeting itself. But if for every minute too much, you feel the grunts from behind, the impatient tapping at your mind, the feeling that every moment extra stuck on this task is making that queue multiply. At times like this, spending 30 minutes talking about improving your reputation is time that could be spent improving your reputation by not wasting time. But you have to wait your turn, whether that time is available or not. This one's called repetition. I was on the train to Manchester and was in that in-between bit of Dean's Gate and Oxford Road. There were two girls at the table seats in front of me, maybe around 13 years old. They had jumped onto the train at Preston, so were travelling for about 50 minutes. They had spent the majority of the trip figuring out how much they had and whether it was enough to get them back. I think I had nine quid between them. They were talking the usual shit you talk about when you're reaching the end of a commute, or one of them asked the other, would you want two million pounds, or two pound every time I pissed you off? Two pound every time you pissed me off. And then her mate asked, would you want two million pounds, or two pound every time you stress me out? Two pound every time you stress me out. Now, I don't know anything about these two people, but in the 50 minutes I'd spent with them, I'd noticed the following. They had tried to get the earlier train, but were stopped by the train conductors. This pissed the girl off and stressed the other one out, having been stopped. The girl was then pissed off about not getting to Manchester on time, which stressed the other one. They were both pissed off and stressed from counting their money. The girl was pissed off from her mate talking so much, but does her attempt to not be so stressed. The girl had her legs up on the table and was pissed off when her mate told her to drop them, as she was stressed ever being noticed by the ticket guy. When they were leaving, the girl was pissed off about the ticket gate, so it stressed the other thinking how to get around the barriers without paying. In the 50 minutes of me listening in, they both earned 12 quid from their hypothetical questions. It would take them each another 999,994 times of being pissed off and stressed at each other to make their lump 2 million sum. I don't know why they made it 2 quid each time, maybe so they could split it between them. All I know is, is that the two girls believe they are more likely to repeat the cycle of one being pissed off and the other being stressed more than a million times in their lives. And this made me think, how many times would they be pissed off and stressed in a day? 12 times every 50 minutes they're awake, so maybe 230 times? How many times would they be pissed off and stressed in a week? 1,610 times. How many times would they be pissed off and stressed in a month? 6,440 times. How many times will they be pissed off and stressed in a year? 83,950 times. How many times will they be pissed off and stressed in their lifetimes? The average age of death is 81 years old and they are around 13, so 5,708,600 times. This last one's called Per Hour. I was looking for a job before.
48 weeks due to the pandemic. My main source of income was a waiting job that paid minimum wage plus tips, making around £10 an hour. I was looking at either another waiting job or something a bit more aspirational, like an administration assistant. Having spent six years in higher education, getting two degrees, a first and a distinction, and working as the vice president of the union for three of those years, I thought my time had a certain value. £10 an hour, maybe. I would look through job search adverts for around 30 minutes Monday to Friday for the period of these eight months, totaling 300 hours. saw that a job didn't advertise their pay at a per hour rate. I would calculate what it would be, but whenever the numbers seemed too good to be true, I doubt it. I'd think that there would be hidden costs to my salary that I didn't know about. I'd think that I would have to work more hours than what the job actually specified. I think I wouldn't be paid the amount stated because of hidden targets I would have to meet within the job. And in spending 300 hours of my life so far looking for a job, I still want to know how much I'm being paid per hour. Because that is the good and the bad thing about being paid per hour. You know how much your time is worth. Even if it means you become limited to your life being lived per hour.